What's up everybody? Welcome back to some more Shop Shenanigans. Uh, today we got my buddy Blake's Rogue, Nissan Rogue here. Uh, took it to a shop and they told him his CB axle boots were ripped uh, and wanted to replace them. They were going to charge him like 800 bones for it. Uh, I said, screw that noise, dude. I can do it for about 300. And uh, so he saves 500 bucks. I make, you know, 100 bucks of the deal. Um, and he has new axles and peace of mind, man. So good times. Um, it's not too bad, though. So I did it on a, another coworker of mine's uh, last year, I think. Something like that. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. So we're going to get started, though. <clears throat> All right, so side cutters here to get this cutter pin out. We're not going to take this bolt completely out. We just want to loosen it with the... Uh, car on the ground so I've got the wheel to hold everything in place for me and that car pin's already broken ha huh, good times oh well all right so once again you need a 32 millimeter socket we're just gonna break this guy loose well, there we go let me do the same thing to the other side all right car pins out and Well, that's a little frightening. It was already loose. So the collar pin was the only thing holding that thing in. Good times. And while we have it on the ground, we'll take a 20 mil socket, 21 mil. Ooh, we'll take a 21 mil socket, break these lug nuts loose. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we got the tires loose, the uh, axle nuts loose. Now we just need to lift this guy up and uh, put on jack stands. We need to chalk the real wheels and uh, we'll drain some transmission fluid. I'm going to flush that while I'm at it. And now we'll bring her down. Welcome to underneath Blake's Nissan Rogue here. So we got oil pan, looks like there's a leak there. Uh, I don't know if it's off the main seal or what. We'll look at that later. Over here's the transmission though. I've already loosened this uh, this drain bolt, which is nice it has one. Otherwise you basically gotta pull the, uh, the whole uh, pan off. So whenever you're doing this, it's important that it's important that you get the same amount of fluid back into it, right? Because you want to have the right at the proper level. So I'm basically going to drain it out. I'm going to pour it into a jug. And I know how much to put back in. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, as opposed to starting up and having to get too much or not enough. In which case, you know, not enough is easy to fix. But I don't want to damage anything in the process. So we're going to pull this drain bolt out, drain out what we can. And then uh, pull some axles and go from there. Let's see how bad of a mess I can make here. I'm surrounded by bees and wasps today. It is nice out though, so. Alright. He said he has no idea the last time it was it was uh, flushed, so. That's kind of dark. Go figure. Things has like 160, 170,000 miles on it, something like that. Um, I mean, I still see it's not like straight black, so. But. Either way, I had a nice, totally empty. Uh, drain pan here before so I know exactly what I'm going to pour back into it. Not this stuff but something new and nice. Um, this is also a CBT transmission, continuously verbal right transmission. I guess the T would be redundant there either way. Uh, but it takes NS2 so uh, make sure the stuff you're using has meets the NS2 requirements for it. So hold that drain and then we'll go ahead and pull some wheels off and uh, see about getting axles out. So um, whenever you pull the axles out you're going to lose some fluid anyway. And if I gotta buy some fluid, I might as well buy a case because it's cheaper by the court that way anyway, you know? Instead of, you know, 20 bucks a court ends up being more like 10. So, um, if that, I think it was like 30 bucks for six quarts. Yes, you're talking five bucks per quart, which is way better than like 10 to 15. So, something like that. Either way. Um, either way, it's definitely cheaper. So, um, you know, it's kind of angled right. I might actually lower it back down and, uh, whoa. Slide down the back train the uh, transition pan there. So yeah, I think I'm gonna lower back down and uh, drain this stuff out as much as I can. Cause that's gonna be worth it. So 
So whenever you're doing a, uh, a drain and fill like I'm doing, you want to get as much as you can. Uh, the torque converter is still going to hold some fluid. That's okay. Um, it's the same thing as getting a flush at a transmission shop because basically it goes through the, uh, the cooler typically is where they hook it up at. Uh, everything just go back to the kit, the pan. So it's not like all the bad stuff comes out and only good stuff goes in. It's like bad stuff comes out, sure, when you start off anyway. Then it all goes back to the pan, mixes up anyway. So the drain fill is just as good. And uh, anybody can do it too in their driveway. So but yeah, let's put that back up. Well, let's put the back end up and uh, see if we can get some more fluid out. All right. So you can see the uh, brake rotor is kind of gouged there. Um, the brake's just fine. There's no, there's no pulsation. It's kind of nice. So, uh, kind of weird. Um, but all good though. <clears throat> We're not here for brakes anyway. This brake pad's getting a little low. Well, I'm gonna think about changing that. You know, in the next year or so, maybe. If not sooner, I'll let him know. Or heck, hey Blake, if you watch this, that's how much pad you got left. It's not a lot, so. Uh, most pads are, you know, probably about two to three times that thick for a new pad, so uh, no big deal. So got, still got some life left, so. So this is our axle here, and you can see it's dripped some grease down there. Um, see that boot's torn right there. That guy's got to go. I want to say this boot was okay. Just kidding. No, it's not. It's ripped right there too. So, right in there, it's ripped. So, that whole thing's coming out. No big deal. Pull this bolt out. We'll probably need to disconnect that upper strut and just lean the whole thing forward. Well, towards me, towards the side, technically. So, um, and then we will go from there. <clears throat> So for my birthday this year, my uh, my stepson was like, what do you want? And I was like, I don't have a 21 mil wrench. I would love to have one of those. So he got me a 21 mil wrench. I think this might be the first time I use it. Unfortunately, I, I told him that he'd be hanging out and working with me whenever I use it. But uh, we'll get you next one, little man. It's cool. It will be used again, I promise you. So. Okay. Let's see if I not get a hernia doing this. Alright. No hernia yet. It's early though. I guess I could still get a hernia. Just because I have insurance doesn't mean I want to use it. strut bolts. Well, if we take the bottom one off, I want to disconnect. I want to disconnect, but unhook all of these uh, ABS cables and pull that brake hose piece too. Let me get it. There we go. Got it. Let me slide that out of the way. And now whenever we have this thing hang off the side, it's not going to hurt anything. So, now I'm going to pull off this bottom bolt. Hernia time. Uh, fine, we'll use a cheater bar. Jack handle for the win. I saw you come loose. Here we go. Now this whole hub should slide right out. We're going to knock this guy back in. It's totally out now. Ta-da! All right, I need a new glove. That thing's ripped. All right, so this guy being front wheel drive. Um, the transmission's on the driver's side, and the uh, 
so the axle has to go all the way across, right? So the, the passenger side one's quite a bit longer. Consequently, it has this little brace right here. I'm going to take that guy out now. All right. Now this should just slide off. All right. Now the hope is whenever I pull it out of the transmission, we're not going to lose any fluid because we drained a whole bunch out. So, well, here goes nothing. All right, that was that was easy. So this is what it looks like with it out. So you see this boot right there was torn, so grease is getting out. Oh, it's not too bad. This one on the other hand, grease is getting out and other crap is getting in. So that caused them to bind up, basically destroys that CV joint. So cause vibrations first and then it gets worse from there. So we got brand new ones going in for them. So I also like how we didn't spill any transmission fluid. That makes me happy. All right, well, time to throw this one back in. Well, not back in, but the new one in. Just to compare new to old, right? So, brand new boots, brand new joints, of course, right? Comes with a new nut as well, as well as a new cotter pin and a castellated nut cap, I guess, if you will, for that guy. So, so we should be good. Also, new new transmission seal right there, right? So, should have no issues, man. The guys look pretty good. Ready for new stuff and new uh, new bearing right here too. That's gonna go in that little cap that we took off. Let's throw this guy in. All right. Well, there we go. That was that was too easy. I mean, we're not done yet, but. We'll tighten these down. Oh, the wife's home. Sweet. She got her hair did. I bet it's fancy. What's up, pretty lady? How's your hair? I like it. Yeah, see, so down the, the color there. Yeah. Pretty weighty. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> <Good day. laughs> I'm gonna put it on YouTube just because I can. <laughs> Done. Done. Nobody Use a YouTube star, girl. <laughs> I will blow out your face, but not your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> right, so got the uh, the uh, strut bolts back in, right? Just screw that axle nut on there. Never retighten it down; it'll actually pull all the way through, which is kind of nice. So uh, this side's basically done, man. So well, okay, not not done. All right, so last but certainly not least, you want to hook up these ABS sensors again so they don't get caught in the wheel, because that would suck. As well as this brake line pops in like so. If I can get it, there we go. And then this clip goes in like so. Once I give it some lift taps in, boom, good as new. Cool. All right. Now it's time for the other side. All right. So this rotor looks a little scored up too. Similar pads on this side, if not a little bit lower maybe. So I might offer to uh, change some brake pads for, for Blake here in the near future. So.
All right. So this guy, this side's kind of cool just because there's no super long shaft, right? It's just this guy, which you can see torn boot right there. I want to say the outer boot was okay though. Yeah, outer boot looks okay. But this guy, this guy's gone, right? All this stuff down here just from grease and grime getting on it, right? So the, the grime will stick to the grease, all that fun stuff. So we're going to pull that guy out. Pull the ABS sensor off. ABS sensor off. I'm going to use a screwdriver to pound that clip out. Screwdriver is not a punch, except for when it's a punch. Oh, I'm just really glad that did not go in the uh, drain pan, so. All right, another new and old comparison here. I guess I could flip them so they're facing the same way. Either way, right? So, transmission side, all the good stuff, right? So, got a new seal on that guy. Um, here's your torn boot, of course. The guy's gone. This one was still good, but, uh, you know, you could always replace just the boot itself, but, like, there's still crap in there. They're a bitch to clean out, so either just get, like, a remand or a brand new one. These are brand new. Um, so, all that good stuff, and then new nut. All that good stuff. Let's throw it in. I'm gonna make sure they're going the right way. Alright. Actually when that was on back side, so. So couldn't quite get this one pressed in all the way, so I'm going to put the old nut on. I'm going to be on that guy to basically push this thing in. That way I don't damage these threads. I'm just going to hit it on this nut, which I'm not going to hurt. Because I'm not going to use this nut anyway. And we are in there. Cool. Alright. Pull this guy back off. Alright, ABS sensors are back in. Let's get this brake one in here as well. Where's the clip? Here's the clip. Now we'll smack this guy in place. There we go. Not going anywhere. We'll put our strut bolts back on. And we'll put our new axle nut on. Whenever we tighten that down, it'll pull the threads into the actual hub here. Cool, man. Didn't leak a drop of uh, transmission fluid either. That's awesome. All right. After a uh, quick search online, apparently the the uh, strut bolts on the knuckle here uh, need to be torqued to about 110. And then the axle bolt, nuts, my bad, uh, gets torqued to 98. So... Um, we'll just do 110 and 98 and call it good. This guy get torqued down once the wheels get on, because otherwise it's just going to spin. I'll just have somebody, if I had somebody to hold the brakes, you know, that's cool, but I don't right now, so not a big deal. All right, so torque wrench set to 110. And 20 a little too far there's a buck 10 okay and of course that's gonna turn on me there's 110 there getting close there's 110 there now the tire can go back on. Hey, right, it looks like uh, that's all we're going to go out of there. Which is cool with me. 
our uh, drain plug back in. The gasket still looks good. Trying to cross thread it. <laughs> there we go. All right. 19 mil. And get that guy nice and snug. Cool. All right. I'm gonna wipe this guy down. And I'll take some brake clean to it also just to get all that fluid off. And it'll look brand new. All right, brake clean time. Oh yeah. Let me some brake clean. A few drops dropping in my, uh, my transmission fluid oil there, but it'll evaporate, so it's cool. All right. So there's our transmission fluid. Got quite a bit on. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So that should be a good flush. On this side, I torqued uh, these guys down already to 110. So once again, we'll torque this guy down to 100. Then we'll put the wheels on. Well, my bad. We're going to put the wheels on first. Then we'll torque it down once it comes down to the ground. So I need that wheel, huh? All right. Time to bring her on down. So the neat part about the uh, stud bolts is they are 21s, just like the wheels. All right, so I got the other side all torqued down, um, as well as the center nut here. So, there we go. So now, this comes with a it's not a castellated nut, so I guess it's a castellated nut cap. Looks like that has little grooves in there that the uh, cotter pin will go through. So, we'll just turn it till it lines up with one of those. All right, so they're all they're all different. So like if you have it like that, right, it blocks a hole, all right? Another turn blocks a hole. Another turn though, lines up just right. So you don't have to worry about like loosening this guy or anything. Um, we'll just line up like, like that that guy through there and then we'll bend it around and we'll be good to go just want to make sure it's turned to where it uh, won't interfere with pulling a wheel off or putting a wheel on for that matter that should clear just fine it ain't going anywhere and Blake you're as good as new sir let's put the hubcap back on Cool. All right, guys. So we took that drain pan, right? Uh, we I carefully poured it into a used oil bottle, right? Funnels are your friend here, right? So one, two, three, four, four and a half. So about about five quarts, really. So we'll throw a, we'll throw a four and a half in there, and we'll check it, warm it up, and stuff. Uh, don't want to go too much, of course. And uh, should be good to go. So the. Dipstick tube for the transmissions right here. I just got a piece of hose and a funnel hooked up to it right. That we don't spill anything. It'll slowly feed down in there and uh, we'll do that. So this is a Castrol's Transmax CVT. It meets NS2 qualifications, all the good stuff. Um, and a whole mess of other stuff too. So uh, the wife's Lancer takes the same stuff. So I've had no issues with it and I like it. It should do Blake some good. It goes really slow through that little tiny tube. That's okay. And due to the editing of uh, videos on YouTube here, this will look like it didn't take any time at all. So look about 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 an hour and a half ish to do all of this, and that's with me, you know, pausing to look up torque specs, taking my time, all that kind of stuff. Don't wanna don't wanna rush to work at all. So that's how stuff gets screwed up. I don't want to do that to anybody's car, especially my buddy Blake here. So, it was one quart. I'll give it a sec to make sure it all runs down the tube here. All right, we'll throw the dipstick back in here. And then we'll fire it up. All right, so once it gets warm, I'll pull the dipstick back out. 
uh, while it's running. Check the fluid level there. Uh, as long as that all, that all pans out, man, then we should be good. And, uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Good day.